I'm going to share with you today a little bit about some of the most courageous people I've ever met. And I happen to have the privilege of serving alongside them in the armed forces. And today of all days on Veterans Day is an incredible day to celebrate not only their sacrifice, but their courage. Now, some of you might not know too much about Veterans Day. And so I've got a quick little video from the History Channel I'm going to play. I want you to pay attention because afterwards, I'm going to ask some questions. If you get them right, you're going to get some free swag. All right, so turn your attention to the, the screen. To honor the millions of men and women who have served or are serving in the nation's armed forces. But bet you didn't know the whole story behind the holiday. For starters, it wasn't originally called Veterans Day, but Armistice Day, to commemorate the truce signed between the Allies and Germany in World War I on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918. The first Armistice Day in the U.S. was celebrated on November 11th, 1919. All business was suspended for two minutes starting at 11 a.m., and parades and public gatherings were held to commemorate the occasion. Later, America also began honoring its unknown soldiers on Armistice Day, a tradition that continues today. At 11 a.m. every Veterans Day, a color guard ceremony represents all branches of the military at the Tomb of the Unknowns in Arlington National Cemetery. In 1954, the name was changed to Veterans Day, following a national campaign to have the day honor all veterans, not just those who served in World War I. And did you know, for seven years, Veterans Day was actually celebrated in October? In 1968, Congress moved Veterans Day to the fourth Monday in October, so that government employees could enjoy a long weekend. But in 1975, President Gerald Ford returned Veterans Day to November 11th due to the historical significance. And that's where it sits on the calendar today. And do you know the difference between Memorial Day and Veterans Day? Both of them honor those men and women who have served in the military, but Memorial Day honors America's war dead, while Veterans Day honors all American veterans, living and dead. The U.S. Census Bureau estimates that there are currently over 21 million living military veterans in the United States. More than 16 million of these served during times of war, while 5.5 million served during peacetime only. So this Veterans Day, don't forget to say thanks to some of the millions of men and women who have served our country. Yeah, you can applaud for that. That's awesome. Okay, you guys, so here's the first question. This is a good, this is an easy one. Just shoot your hand up if you're ready. How many veterans are there currently in the United States? All right. Yes, sir. 20 million. How many? 20 million. Close, but no cigar. Let me come on. Out. Yes, yes. 21 million is correct. Great job. All right. Just a little bit about this swag. I um when I when I broke the uh, when I maxed out the Army Combat Fitness Test and then I won uh, the obstacle course challenge for our entire battalion. My battalion started calling me Chaplain America. And so when American Ninja Warrior heard my story, they said, that's going to be your name. That's going to stick. So these are, these are shirts that were designed for the show. So anyways, I got four. I had 40, but the middle schoolers cleaned me out. All right. I had some guys come up, say, I want a shirt. I want a shirt. I said, all right, knock out some push-ups. About 20 of them did push-ups. Anyways, they kept going. They were squirrely, squirrely guys, man. They just kept going. I said, all right, you guys all grab some shirts. And then all their friends grabbed some too. So I got three left. Second question, what was Veterans Day originally called? Oh, wait. Woo! wait, I have, there's, I have a reason why man is. All right, you, what is it? That is correct, and how was it celebrated? Do you remember? I remember. remember? Yes. All right, all, um, after 11 a.m. Yep. Business for two minutes. That's right. It should have been 11 minutes, right? Yeah, yeah. There you go. Good job. All right. Next question I have for you guys. How many branches are in the armed forces right now? All right. How many branches are there in the armed forces? You, young man. 
Name them. Yep. Yep. Navy, Army, Marines, Coast Guard, Air Force. That is correct. Now, can anyone tell me the branch that he forgot that, that recently came out? Andrew, what's the last one? That is correct. The Space Force. This is for you. Now, ladies, I'm not biased. I only had X largest left, so that's why I went with the fellas. Will you get that to Andrew? Thank you. All right, so, so today on Veterans Day, I want to celebrate with you an attribute that so many veterans possess, but sometimes is rare in the civilian world. I want to talk about an attribute that, that really all of us want, but few of us would say that we truly have. I want to talk to you about an attribute that if you have this one attribute in your life, you will likely live a fulfilling life and a successful life. If you are lacking this one attribute in your life, you will never rise up to your potential and you will be paralyzed by fear. Today, I want to talk to you about courage. You see, courage is simply this. It's the ability to overcome Fear. For you, courage might look like overcoming rejection or speaking in public or standing up for someone here at your school that's being bullied. You see, courage can look like each and every one of you when you face your fears and overcome them. You know, I'm fortunate to serve with some of the bravest men and women I've ever met in the armed forces. They, their acts of valor continue to inspire me. And I want to I walk in their shoes down the path of courage with you this morning. And I want to share with you some of the lessons that I've learned from our veterans. Lesson number one about how to become courageous. Courage is motivated by sacrifice. Courage is motivated by sacrifice. All the heroes that I've met are truly selfless people. They sacrificed greatly because they believed in a greater cause. Men like Marine James Hassel, who on August 12, 2004 in Iraq was under insurgent attack. He and his squad were receiving heavy fire and a grenade was tossed in their general direction and it wounded one of his buddies. His name was Chris. In that moment, Marine Hassel had a choice to make. He could stay buried down in his bunker where he was safe or he could risk his life to get his friend who he knew was bleeding to death and get him to a medevac helicopter, which was about 100 meters down a straight and narrow path, an easy open target for the enemy. What would you do in that moment? Marine Hassel didn't think for a second. He jumped out of his bunker. He ran to his buddy. He picked him up, threw him on his back, and made a mad dash for that medevac helicopter because he knew it was the only chance to save his fellow soldier's life. After that event, when the fire ceased, one of his commanding officers came up to him and said, why did you do that? You put yourself in harm's way. You went above and beyond the call of duty. And he looked at his commanding officer and he said, we're Marines, that's what we do. You know, in moments like that, when you see great sacrifice taking place, you recognize courage for what it is. You know, today, that soldier, Chris, is alive because of what James did for him. You and I might not have the opportunity, especially down the halls of Florida Christian, to carry a buddy on our back under insurgent fire and do something really courageous, but there's a good chance life is going to knock your friend down at some point. And in that moment, you'll have a chance to be there by their side, 
pick them up and help them to keep pressing on. And that, my friend, is an opportunity for you to take another step forward down the path of courage. You know, the second lesson that I've learned in the military is that courage is not motivated by success. Now, I hope that every one of you are crazy successful. I hope you pursue your dreams and you find great fulfillment doing whatever it is God put you on this earth to do. And I hope you're successful at it. But I want you to know every hero that I met, they never acted for personal recognition. They just did their job in their own words. And they did what they hoped everyone would do if they were in a similar situation. Men like Private Steve Stanford of the Army Infantry, who on November 19, 2005, was in a nasty firefight in Iraq. He saw Ryan, a fellow soldier, suffer a devastating shot to his neck from a sniper. He immediately jumped out in front of the wire, got on top of his friend, and started performing CPR to try and save his life. The sniper now had a new target. In that moment, he realized he was being shot at too, but he wouldn't stop because he knew he was his friend's only hope for survival. Do, do. Metal was now sticking out of his Kevlar vest, but it hadn't killed him. But two shots did find their way to his leg. Now he was bleeding profusely as well, but he didn't stop. He kept going, pressing, doing everything he could fervently to save his friend's life. Eventually, he passed out from all the blood loss that he had, and his unit had to pull him back behind the line. When he was at the hospital, he was made aware that he was going to receive an award for the acts of heroism that he had performed that day. A month later, as he was being pinned by the Joint Chief of Staff Marine General Pace, he noticed that the general's hand was shaking. In that moment, the general looked at him and said, Now, Corporal Steve, I've never pinned a higher honor award on a soldier. He was receiving the Distinguished Service Cross, and he was nervous. Well, Steve looked at the general as a meager corporal, and he said, General, don't worry, this is my first time too. He then went on to say these words, and I hope you'll hear them. Honestly, it's an honor to receive this award. I'm humbled by it. But at the same time, in reality, it's just a two-ounce piece of bronze. If it means anything, I think it means that I have a responsibility to use this time in the spotlight to help my fellow veterans who've also been wounded and become disabled for their service. You know, Steve and other soldiers that I've met who are truly heroes always downplay what they've done and the sacrifice that they've made. They were always compelled by a deep sense of duty and honor. And it begs the question, if you and I found ourselves in a similar circumstance, what would we do? Would we play it safe and live to see another day? Or would we put our lives on the line so that someone else could be helped and maybe live? I think and hope that most of us would want to do the courageous thing and selflessly serve others. That's certainly what Christ did for us on the cross, and it seems to me that's what he's calling us to. But how do we get there? How do we go from where we are to where we want to be? How do we, how do we become courageous. You know, if I had to shoot straight with you, I've struggled to be courageous my whole life. While I'm grateful to be where I am today and have the accolades and the positions that I do, my path here was a path of failure, stumbling from one failure to another. In the words of Winston Churchill, I failed my way forward. I can remember when I was your age, I was in a dark place in my life. I was struggling academically and socially. My parents had just moved to a new city, and I had zero friends. I was just starting to hit puberty, 
and I had terrible acne. Algebra made no sense to me. I don't understand how two negatives equal positive still today, but it does. In that moment, my grades started to slide. I was embarrassed at how I looked. And again, I had no friends. At this moment in my life, where you sit today, I had a choice to make. Should I A, act courageously and not worry about how I look, find a math tutor and learn algebra and become a friend to others, or B, act out of fear by trying to hide my acne, take shortcuts and cheat on tests, and instead of making friends, fight bullies. Oh, what do you think I did? A or B? A or B? How many of you think I chose path A? How many think I chose path B? You're correct. I chose poorly. You know, uh, I acted out of fear rather than courage. And that resulted in me still today having no idea how to spell many words because I cheated on so many spelling tests. I didn't do that well in math. And I still have a scar on my face from a guy who hit me with a master lock when we were in a fight. You know what this path led me down? It led me down the path of getting kicked out of school. So now I became the kid that nobody wanted their kids to hang out with because I was the negative influence. That did not help my friend's situation at all. So now being a free agent of sorts, and looking for a new school, I had another choice to make. So, do I A, courageously get my act together and make the most of my fresh start, or B, do I continue passively down this path of destruction? Well, what do you think? A, anybody? What about B? Oh man, you guys got my number, all right? Unfortunately, I chose to keep cheating, lying, and stealing. And you know what happened? I got kicked out of another school. And this landed me now at an all boys boarding military high school. And I had a third choice to make in my life. Would I A, start studying hard and compete for a spot on the varsity teams and start reading the Bible for myself or B, Keep cheating, lying, and fighting. Well, what do you think I did? A or B? All right. Some of you believe in me. Thank you. I chose A, all right? I chose A. Yeah, so I actually made the honor roll, which my parents couldn't believe, nor could I. I started studying instead of spending all my time figuring out how to cheat. Instead of fighting, I, I started competing on the athletic field and I made the varsity soccer, track, and football team. And on top of that, I picked up God's Word for the first time in my life. And I started to read it. And I lived happily ever after. No. No, but it was a point in my life where I started to turn in a new direction. You know, it wasn't long after that that I did the most courageous thing I've ever done in my life. And that was surrender my life to Christ and ask him to become my Lord and Savior. You know, no one's ever going to be able to convince me that God isn't real because he changed my life from the inside out. He changed my heart and my desires. He gave me a purpose and a passion to live for. He cleansed me from my sins and he forgave me. He redeemed and restored a broken vessel like me and he helped me to start living honorably and walking down a more courageous path. What I'm trying to tell you is that your current condition is not your conclusion. You hear me? Your current condition, where you are today, who you are today, is not who you have to be tomorrow. Your current condition is not your conclusion. And your path forward is going to be a path down the road of courage. And I think if you keep walking down it long enough, eventually you're going to find Christ. You know, there's a time in my life, or excuse me, there's a time in Israel's history where they needed a lot of courage. 
the army was about to go to battle. They were going to enter the promised land. For 40 years, they had followed Moses and wandered in the wilderness. But now it was their time. It was their day. But they had to step up and take what was rightfully theirs. A man named Joshua had been chosen by God and recognized by the people as a special leader because he lived honorably and he feared God and honored him with his life. But Joshua knew he had big shoes to fill. Who would want to follow in Israel's greatest leader's steps? Those are big shoes to fill. Not to mention, you got to lead your people into the promised land. That would require a lot of strength. What would Moses say that would not only support Joshua as the leader, but inspire a nation to step out from fear to faith and move forward courageously? Well, these are the very words found in Joshua chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. When you honor God, He will honor you. When you live honorably and you do so daily, you will face and overcome so many small battles in your life. When you face a big one, you'll be ready. You'll be ready like Marine Hassel and Private Stephen to do something incredibly courageous because daily you've done something courageous. You know, Jesus said that even though things might not be possible with man, with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. So you and I, in our own strength, might not be able to live courageously or be the kind of person that we want to be. But we can take that next step forward by building our lives on the rock-solid foundation of God's Word. When you read God's Word, it'll begin to change you from the inside out. It'll give you the perspective you need and the direction you need and the foundation you need to do something courageous. Jesus said it like this. Whoever hears these words of mine and does them, they're like the person that built their house on the rock. And when the rains fell and the waters rose and the winds beat against that house, it stood because it was built upon the rock. But the person who hears these words of mine and doesn't do them, they're like the person that built their house on the sand. And when the rains fell and the waters rose and the winds beat against that house, it fell and the fall of it was great. You and I can become courageous by building our lives on the rock-solid foundation of God's Word. It has stood the test of time, and it is something that you can build your life on. You know, as we close today, I wanted to close with a video about our veterans and the evil that they have to face and take on every day for our freedom. As you watch it, I hope it inspires you to live courageously.
Let me uh, briefly close in a word of prayer. Lord, I thank you so much for these students. They are the future. I pray that you would bless them and keep them, that your face would shine on them, that you would help them to step up from fear to faith and live courageously. Lord, help them to do the honorable thing and to sacrifice for a greater cause. Help all of us to overcome our fears and live in a manner that's truly worthy of your name, that steps into the promise and the future that you have for each and every one of us. Lord, I thank you for this great country, and I thank you for the veterans that have sacrificed so much for freedom. We know that freedom is near and dear to your heart because you died to set men and women free. And our country's battle to liberate the oppressed around the world is an honorable one. Would you sustain us to that end and bless the soldiers that are fighting for that cause? God, your word said that if we meditate upon your word and are careful to do everything written in it, then we are going to be prosperous and successful. And we are not to fear and we are not to shrink back, but we are boldly to move forward in your name and in your strength. I pray that you'd help each and every student do that today, to live a life of courage and honor by building upon your word. God, for the student in here who is struggling, who's wandering like Israel did in the wilderness, that needs to find their path forward, I pray that you would hear this prayer as they pray it right now. Lord Jesus, I need you. I pray you would guide and direct my path. I've tried to do life in my own strength, and I've tried to determine what is right. Ultimately, Lord, I need you. I'm lost. I pray that you would forgive me of my sins and cleanse me, that you'd make me new, that you'd give me a new heart and help me to be the courageous person that I know you're calling me to be. And I pray all these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Stay courageous. All right. Take a seat for a second.